Greetings and salutations and welcome to the inventor video and today we are going to be doing the frame generator which if you don't know what that is it's a simple process well not simple but it's a process that allows you to make still frames very quickly using standardized st stock metal parts and so this actually all starts and is all housed in the assembly in the assembly environment so if you just go into the assembly bish bash bosh you got an assembly up now, if you notice, if you go to design, you see you can go into insert frame, but you can't, you actually have to save it. So if I go into, let's create a new one, let's just call it YouTube. And we're going to create this, we're just going to call it frame demo. Now, in order to create a frame, you've actually got to have something in there. The quickest way and proper way to do it is to use the create. So if you just click on create, and now you can create a part. So if I just call this thing frame, it's going to use standard IPT and it's going to save it in the folder we created. That's very important. It helps keep your frames all very nicely organized. Bomb structure, however, this is the bill of materials. We're actually going to set it as reference. What this means is, is it now does not get included in the bomb structure because this is going to form the skeleton of your frame. If you, have set, if you actually have it in there, it'll get included bill of materials, which is not very useful because really you've got to think about it. You're just using the edges to build your frame around and you can just click OK. And so you just click OK, click. And now you're kind of in a part environment in assembly environment. So you've got another layer. So you've got your assembly on, if you think of your assembly on top and then below it, you've got your part of gesture of hands, which obviously you can't see. Right, so. If we now let's just we'll just start simple. Let's just start sketch. Let's go. We'll spice it up just a little bit more. If we just go there, hexagon, and let's say you just do that. Finish sketch, and let's just say then you extrude it, and let's just say I extrude it up like twenty-five. So there's the rough shape. Job done. Now if you then click return, what you can now do is you've now got a skeleton that you can now build around. If you want to return and click on design, insert frame, what you can now do is you can now individually select each of the edges. And what it will do is it will place frame on it. Now if you just drag like that, it will add frame members to each side of it. So that's a quicker way of doing it. But now then what you've now got is you've now got your frame member sections, which decides what kind of bar you're going to be using. Now, so you can go to ISO, International Standard Organization. Uh, but you've got everything, ASI, DIN, GB, everything you kind of really need. ISO, just because it makes sense, it's what I'm used to. Family. Now, this is kind of what to expect. So, you got everything from round, square, flat, hollow box section, L, angle iron, bars, pretty much whatever. You can go square. Just remember it does take a bit of time to update. I'm just going to leave it at round. Size, obviously you can now dictate how big or how small, but obviously it's got to be within the standard. This probably does look a little bit big what it is. Hey ho. And you can go material. So you can now choose, well, what do I want to make it out of? You got steel, so I can select a stainless. Or whatever but you can also select an appearance so if you're gonna have it I don't know if you also got, if you're doing like an acrylic you can set it to acrylic and just set a color to it for example now what you've got here is orientation and so on the line you've got to think about where this actual part passes through and you can now then set it so it's either above it around it in the middle I generally keep it in the middle because that's how I design it but you can just change it how you want so yeah keep it in the middle and obviously then you can offset it up down left right and you can then click apply and click ok and it's going to create all of these files in there and they all, all you can rename them but I'll just leave as is click ok and there you go so now then, if I just select this and make you invisible, what you can now see is the steel frame. Yes, it is just a bit out of proportion, 
but it's fine. But now you've got all sorts of little tools here that you can use to adjust it. The main one that I tend to use is the mitre. Now you can be maximum laser. So you've got two options. You've kind of got a one pair of frames, so you can just select two things. Or you've got the multi thing where you can just select all of them. And what it will do is it will just click apply. Because then mitre all your joints. This is going to be all done real, real time. So they all fit nice and neatly together. This does take a bit of time and does depend on how many joints. So obviously the more vertices and vertexes you have, the longer it will take. Because remember it's going to trim them all down. So if you see here, the edges are getting neater, but it's obviously starting to lag slightly on my machine. Not completely though. So if you just wait a little longer, it's that side I think left. And there you go, so they're now all perfectly done. Now what you can also do is if you set an offset in here, you can leave a gap. So when you move it into a when you move it into a weldment and add chamfers, it all becomes very easy to weld it together. Now there are a couple other things you can do. You've got a notch which allows you to actually put a frame member into another frame member, which I'll demonstrate in another video when I go into weldments. And then you've also got trim, extend, length, and shorten. You've also got other parts where you can end so you can end treat them. This but this just removes the mice of the end treatment, refresh, frame members, and you've got all sorts of other tools which are quite quite useful. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.